This is instrumentation. This is what makes a field environment with free-moving actors a true laboratory with controlled test conditions. Now to see it in action. There are three ranges presenting situations from first contact with enemy to assault of enemy position to defense against enemy assault. But the principle of operation is the same for all. To protect the validity of the test, each team fires a given range situation only once and has never fired it before in just this way until the time comes to make the test run. Added authenticity comes from the fact that many of these men are experienced veterans of combat in Vietnam. When they fire, the test group will be reacting to unforeseen targets in unknown numbers at uncertain ranges. This spontaneity of reaction is essential to the realism the range is designed to produce. Even the firing positions are made to resemble the hasty foxholes of a defense perimeter in combat. Here too, realistic field conditions combine with laboratory instrumentation. Alongside every firing position is an acoustic device which will inform the electronic brain of the exact moment each weapon is fired. A few last minute preparations and the test run can begin. Commence firing. by moment. Each split second of the action on the range is monitored and recorded in detail. Firing, cease firing. Now, out of the electronic memory banks, the facts come, pouring out for analysis and evaluation every minute detail of what has just taken place on the range. Another run, just one of hundreds, on which final statistical analysis will be based. The test squad turns in its unused ammunition so that the exact number of rounds remaining can be figured into the final results of the test run. Meantime, the experiment will continue with other fire teams, other test runs. The indications are that final completion will mark a milestone in military history. For the first time, an army will have an impersonal scientific body of fact on which to base its decisions as to the best organization and weapons for its basic infantry elements. This unique military scientific operation is just beginning to realize the potential contribution it can make to the military planning and preparedness 
of the United States Army. In the works now are plans to increase the automation of CDEC's fact-gathering process, which will mean still greater freedom of action in the simulated combat situations being evaluated in the Fort Ord Field Laboratory. What CDEC is doing has never been done before, but it had to be done now. The speed of military and technological development in our century leaves no margin for guesswork, no time for the leisurely trial and error of yesterday. Our planning, our decisions, must be based on measured fact, and that is what the military field laboratory of CDEC is designed to provide. The methodology may be complex, but the ultimate purpose is simple. To help give greater effectiveness to the soldier who has to win on the battlefield. The individual American in uniform on whom in the end it all depends. This is what it's all about. All the thinking and planning, the measuring and recording and analyzing. For the combat soldier and for his commanders, today's problem and tomorrow's problems need the best solution. To help ensure that they will be the best is the job of the Combat Developments Command and CDEC to help make of today's vision tomorrow's victory. <laughs> <laughs>